Sorry, this video was a little late. I had to stop in the bathroom. Whether you're a brand new player or a seasoned veteran, I hope this video will give you the skills needed to become the next double O agent. With that out of the way, let's get on with... When it comes to the controls for the Switch and Xbox versions of GoldenEye, they simply don't work as well as the original NC4 version does. For the Xbox version, it offers you solid customization options, just make sure you set your D-pad as move and strafe. Now when it comes to the Switch version, unless you have an NC4 controller, things are going to be more complex. In order to modernize your controls to make things better, you first need to enter the in-game pause menu. Navigate over to control selection and switch from the default to 1.2 solitaire setup. Then move over to the settings menu and set your lookup to upright instead of reverse. Then you need to open your switch menu via the home button and navigate over to the system settings. Move down your menu till you reach controllers and sensors and select the change button mapping from within that. From there select your change for your controller and move down to control stick settings. Select the option to change your control sticks around by selecting on. Then go back and make sure you hit done for it to save. You could also change your other buttons around in here but it's simply preference. With all this done, you now have more reliable controls going forward. Granted, it's not perfect and there are other solutions, but this is arguably the easiest and most effective to use currently. Use strafing to move faster. Basic strafing is executed by pressing and holding down either the left or right C buttons. In order to run faster, you would pair this by moving the control stick in the direction you want to move in while also looking to the side at roughly a 45 degree angle. If you're playing on the Switch version of GoldenEye with Control Scheme 1.2, then you simply just need to tilt the analog stick up and to the left or right. If you're playing on the Xbox version, however, then you're best off mapping your D-pad to move and strafe, since this will always give you the maximum speed. Make sure to practice strafing in order to maneuver around enemies and other players very quickly. By performing circle strafes, half circles, and figure eights regularly, you can quickly get better at strafing while also using them to help you win gunfights. Finally, also remember you can perform corner leaning by holding down your aiming button while pressing either left or right C. This is great for quickly shooting and hiding. If you're playing on the Switch version and want a more immersive experience of the game, then you need to enable the widescreen by changing the ratio to 16x9 in the pause menu. If you also want to get rid of the Switch button shortcuts, then you need to go back to the game selection menu and uncheck the box in the control display. Hoard up that body armor. Whenever playing multiplayer modes where the life bar matters, always try to find and keep your body armor topped up as this will greatly increase your chances of surviving encounters. Make use of screen looking for master level awareness. While people like to say they don't do it, it can be quite hard to guarantee someone isn't looking at your screen unless you have some kind of elaborate setup. Just make sure to not get lost in a stare and allow someone to take advantage of your distracted state. In the game, you can toggle auto aim on and off. If you're a new player, it's best to keep auto aim on until you feel your accuracy is proficient. But be aware that when you go up into higher difficulties in single player mode, auto aim's influence will be reduced. A lot of players also play multiplayer with it off, so be ready for that. Remember to reload as often as you can. It's always better to go into a gunfight with a full magazine rather than a single bullet. Aim for the hat. When playing on single player, you can hilariously shoot off enemies' hats without them noticing. Though really, since GoldenEye features a body hit detection system, you should be aiming for enemies' heads as much as possible in order to kill them easier while also trying to conserve your ammo. The same can be said for multiplayer, so try to hit those headshots on other players unless you're playing on license to kill, then if that's the case, just shoot whatever you can hit first. You can actually avoid a lot of damage when playing in single player by going right into enemies' faces just like this. Doing this, while a bit silly, can make it very hard for them to hit you depending on their attack animation, which in turn gives you a very easy way to kill them. In single player, be sure to avoid security cameras as much as possible. Cameras can be destroyed by a single well-placed shot right in the lens. Also be wary of where alarms are and also take them out as well as the guards near them to avoid getting swarmed by enemies. As odd as it is, one burst aka a single shot from any gun you use will not alert the guards regardless if it's silenced or not. So keep this in mind to avoid alerting enemies to your location. You can actually reload while holding down the trigger by pressing your A button whenever the gun clip is empty. Doing this can be very useful when you are right next to a door and want to avoid interacting with it. If you want to re-enter the ventilation in the facility, then you need to stand on the toilet while holding down your aim button. 
Next, also hold left on the control stick while also holding left C. This will cause you to spin in circles and if done correctly, you will hop right back into the vents. One of the hardest guns to land shots with is the golden gun. When using this gun, your best bet is to try to line up your shot with your target's chest while also predicting your movements. Luring them into a narrow area can also help your chances. For completing Bunker 2, stealth is the easiest path since shooting any non-silenced weapon will trigger waves upon waves of guards, unless it's a single shot. When starting off in the cells, make sure you get the throwing knives from down here while also using a watch magnet to escape the cell. Then either use slappers or knives for stealth till you can get the safe key from this guard to get the dual silenced PP7, in which you can use to dispatch cameras and guards very easily. As a good rule, leaving Natalia in her cell till you're almost ready to leave is a wise call since she can easily get in the crossfire. If you always wanted to make your mines float, here's how. Whenever playing multiplayer mode, you can throw your mines on a window or glass wall then proceed to shoot the glass. The glass will then break and shatter but the mines will stay floating in the air. This will result in some unsuspecting players dying to something quite funny. Of course, this works best with either remote mines or proximity mines. If you have the radar, use it. For multiplayer, using this powerful tool along with the occasional screen glance will help keep you ready for anything. It also will tell you who has the objective whenever you're playing the man with the golden gun or flag tag. Try to utilize secret passageways whenever possible in both single player and multiplayer maps. For example, on stages like Archives, Caverns, and Egypt, you can find hidden pathways and doors that will help you sneak up on both enemies and other players. In order to gain more time and escaping the train, you need to take out Xenia alongside Oromov. Be sure you see the dialogue of her telling Trevelyan to wait up to ensure you did it correctly. Doing this is huge in Double O Agent in order to complete all the mission objectives and to escape safely. However, if you don't end up taking Xenia, then you still can't survive. But you must go to the area on the left where the guards are to keep Natalia alive while the train explodes. When it comes to dealing with sentry guns, your best options are to stay out of its range and snipe them, and peek around walls or areas where you can see the gun but it can't quite hit you, even if it's shooting. You could also use rocket launchers to make life really easy. Make sure you take advantage of the terrible awareness guards have and the environment around them. Whenever you come across doors with windows like these on Bunker, you can take advantage of them by shooting through them to take out guards and cameras even if you're in the line of sight. There are many cheats available in Golden 964 either by completing missions under certain times to unlock them permanently, or by inputting codes on different screens from within the game to unlock the cheats temporarily. For inputting the codes on the Switch version, make sure you use the D-pad, and if the codes are inputted correctly, you'll see a notification in the bottom left area of the screen, or hear the sound in the cheats menu. I'll be leaving a link in the description for how to unlock all the cheats in the game. When dealing with one of the most hated parts in the game, defending Natalia on control, you can protect her from the lower level, but this can be very annoying since you can get overwhelmed very easily. A better way to deal with this is to first get body armor from where Boris runs off to. Then position yourself here on the second floor overlooking Natalia. The guards without hats that will go after Natalia only spawn from the top floor, and the guards with a hat will target you from all sides. Having solid accuracy and checking your left and right quite often can make this method more reliable. The club is generally regarded as the worst gun in the game due to how inaccurate it is and its poor damage output. Unless it's the only gun available, you're best off not using it. Whenever you're trying to aim with a rocket launcher, it's best to shoot either for the wall near your enemy or the floor around them to ensure hitting them with some fire spread. This is because going for a direct hit can result easily in a miss. You can actually prevent enemies from getting to you by playing tug of war with the doors by closing them whenever the enemies try to open it. While this may seem silly, it can actually serve you really well in buying time for mission objectives and survival situations. For certain missions, you can actually get through them without firing a single shot. For example, on Statue, you can simply run your fastest with strafing to each objective, which will greatly increase your chances of clocking well under the target times. Grenades, just like timelines, have a fuse timer. The big difference is, a grenade timer can be cooked and thrown before it explodes while also having the ability to bounce off of walls. So be sure to take advantage of cooking your grenades and throwing them in your opponent's faces, as well as using map geometry for some sneaky kills. Always try to shoot through doors whenever you can for easy damage or kills on guards and imposing players. Guns like the Cougar Magnum, AR-33, RCP-90, and Moonranker Laser all have the ability to pierce through doors and enemies, so line up your shots as much as possible. Ducking for the win By holding down your aim button and pressing down C, you can go into a ducking animation in which you can use to slide around. Generally a good trick is to run up point blank to someone and quickly duck to be out of their field of view while unloading your weapon on them. To disarm proximity mines, you have a few options. 
You can either shoot the mines directly, or use a weapon with an explosion to disarm it, or even run near to it quickly to trigger its proximity fuse while quickly pulling back, though this is the riskiest way to do this. A personal favorite method for me is to shoot either the weapons, ammo, or body armor in the multiplayer maps near to the mine to disarm it. Do note, wherever you shoot these equipment will be their new respawn location for the rest of the match. For defeating Xenia on a top easily on the jungle level on any difficulty, simply do this. Walk backwards when near the bridge to cross it. Then stop at this tree and spin around to shoot and kill her before she can even reach you. This works because you need to be either looking at her or close enough to trigger her. You can also dispatch the drone gun very easily from this spot. When playing License to Kill in multiplayer, there are a few strategies you can use that give you the edge. Use weapons with large clips and fast fire rates, especially automatics. Explosives can also be super dangerous if allowed on, so play safe. Do not stand in the open for too long and instead pick narrow areas and unused passageways. Regardless if your opponent has a gun or not, a kill is a kill, so no mercy. Since it's one shot kills, slappers can be very deadly, so make sure you time your chops and do not chop your enemy at the exact same time they go for you, since you'll both hilariously die. A key thing to do is play just out of their range of their chop and go in and land yours right after they just whiff theirs. You can also try running up and crouching for a crafty kill, as well as performing a mixture of half circles and full circles via strafing. When using remote mines, you can perform a quick detonate by pressing A and B at the same time after throwing it. This method is much faster than switching over to your watch. Just make sure you don't detonate mines too close to your face. Use roll peeking as much as possible. Basically, this involves sliding along a wall or surface to get a shooting angle on enemies while they can't hit you. It does take time to perfect this technique, and personally, I find it a bit tougher to execute this on the current hardware controllers versus the Nintendo 64. When trying to clear the radio room in caverns, the best way of doing this is by breaking the windows just outside of the room to lure some guards from the left side out to you. Then quickly move to the wall on the same left side where a guard will run out with a grenade. Quickly kill him and the guard on the right. After that, you can slowly pick off the guards in the radio room by playing with line of sight angles or by crouch sliding to get close to them one by one. Doing it this way is the safest since it's very common for a simple shot or grenade to destroy that entire room causing you to fail your objectives. In multiplayer, you normally aren't allowed to have more than one of the same character, however there is a glitch to bypass this. What the glitch enables for you is to have a maximum of 3 players as the exact same character. I'll put the instructions on how to perform this glitch on the screen along with the gameplay footage of it being done. Master Grenade Geometry In order to become insanely deadly with the grenade launcher, you need to first learn and practice grenade bounce angles. There are even shots that can be performed with this weapon that can take your opponents out long before they ever even see you. Or you know, you could just keep it basic and shoot at your opponent's feet. Take advantage of hitboxes clipping. A lot of times whenever you or enemies are too close to walls, doors, and even floors, you will see parts of the body appearing through the object. Whenever this happens, make sure to shoot at it as it can be used for easy damage and or kills. When it comes to dealing with 006 on Cradle, there are a few strategies you can employ to take him out quickly, though some are much faster than others and they're also very tough to perform. A strategy I like to use is by first completing Objective A and taking out the sentries and the computer in this room while also shooting Trevelyan. Once that's done, head over to this area overlooking where he's waiting and shoot him in the head. Then run over to the other side and repeat this process till he triggers the final phase of the fight. The main thing here is all about keeping him running back and forth from only the bottom level. Just be sure to watch out for his bodyguards and deal with them as fast as possible to stay alive. In GoldenEye 64, there is a way to dual wield two different guns via a glitch. All that is required is having dual guns in your weapon list either from a cheat menu or picked up from enemies. While there are one or two different ways to perform this glitch, the one I'll go over involves quickly changing your gun while exploiting the pause menu. In order to do this glitch, select the dual guns you want to mix and match. Next, shoot your guns and then reload them both at the same time. While the reload animation is starting, hit your button to switch to your next weapon once, while quickly hitting the pause button right after. If done correctly, you will now have two different guns at the ready. This may require some practice to get the timing down. As for the other way how to do this, I'll display it on screen.
Flee if necessary. Whenever you find yourself in trouble either due to a health or ammo situation, don't feel shy about running away to either find equipment to help yourself out, or at least change the location of the fight to somewhere more advantageous for yourself. On the Aztec level, to easily take out Jaws, you need to get as close to him as possible while laying in some headshots. Though be aware, doing this, you can still take damage depending on his shooting animation. Another method to take him out is to lure him to the stairwell and keep kiting him over and over till he dies. You could also make him chase you to where glass doors are in order to delay the elite guards from spawning and to make your way back to launch a rocket much easier. Don't pick odd job. This is because the character is by far the shortest in the game which can offer a smaller hitbox in gunfights during multiplayer matches, something that the majority of players aren't a fan of. Aside from most players hating your choice, I also say don't pick odd job because if you have to rely on him to win or even stand a chance in matches, then you'll even have a harder time winning if he's already picked or banned from being chosen. In order to obtain the golden gun in Egypt, you must navigate this room in a certain path along the floor in order to safely reach the gun. Doing this incorrectly will keep the golden gun locked in its case in which you must exit the room to reset it before the sentry guns are revealed to mow you down. The path for unlocking the gun is always the same, so use the four tiles as a guide and follow this path. Memorize those maps till you know it like the back of your hand. While this applies to both single player and multiplayer, it can be just what sets you apart from your opponents in multiplayer. Learning spawn points, vantage points, hiding spots, and weapon spawn locations can be just what turns you into a true double O agent. Throughout single player, you will come up to certain doors that have to be unlocked by a keycard or a computer. To bypass this process, you can at times shoot at the door to lure the guards out from the other side to open it for you. By doing this, you can speed through levels much quicker. Plan out your shooting path. If you know you'll be flying around a corner to shoot at an enemy, sentry gun, or especially another player, then pre-frying right before you move out can give you the edge on winning the encounter. Use doors as shields. A lot of doors can protect you from bullets, so a common strategy is to open doors to get some quick shots off and then closing it when the enemies go to return fire. Doing this over and over can help you deal with enemies and even players very effectively. Proximity Mine Domination one of my favorite strategies with proximity mines in multiplayer is by placing mines in every spawn point, then killing my opponent once to then watch them be killed by mines over and over at every respawn location, resulting in easy kills for me. This strategy however can backfire badly if you're the first one killed. That concludes all 50 tips. If you found this video useful or feel I missed a tip, please let me know down in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.